If you've got a MIDI track in your GarageBand project that looks quite complex, a bit like this, then the prospect of editing can be pretty daunting. So in this video, I'm going to show you some of the techniques and tips I use to edit complicated MIDI tracks here in GarageBand on the iPhone or the iPad. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And in this video, we're doing the creation and more precisely the editing process of this track. So we, I have a piano track here. This is part of a new song that I'm working on at the moment, and it's a very stripped down kind of song. It's only got four tracks here, two guitars, one vocal, and one piano. But the piano itself has some fairly complicated parts in there. So let's take a quick listen to the piano as it sounds at the moment, just by itself. So you can hear there that it's just sort of plodding along there and if we bring that back into the mix. It's a dream of wicked breaks. And I've got some mixing and some, some other balancing to do here. This is just a demo at the moment, but I wanted to edit this piano part down to get it sounding good. Now, the first thing you're gonna to say to me is, Pete, can't we just quantize this sucker? And yeah, of course we can. Uh, the problem here is though, that because I've played this and I've got a lot of little um, ghost notes or for whatever you call them in piano, I'm not a piano player. Uh, that's what you call them in drumming, yeah? I've got a lot of little syncopated rhythms and little bits in here that if I quantize, they're not gonna sound quite right. So let's go to a section down down here that's a bit different. Uh, let's play this back as it is, and then I'm going to quantize it and show you the difference. So what is to be done of it? Oh. So you can hear that there's, there's some fairly sort of natural <coughs> kind of um, bits in there that we want to actually preserve. Now let's go in and see if we can quantize. So we're going to go up here. If you need to learn about quantizing or want to learn about quantizing, I've got videos about that. I'll link up above and down below. But we go into track settings and quantization. Now it's a bit of a swing rhythm. So let's go swing and let's just put it on uh, 1 16th note light, which is kind of the lightest version of quantization we can do. We'll go out of there and come back to our track. And let's play back this same section and see what it sounds like now. So what? Not that it sounds bad, but when you hear those that da 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 da, da like they're, they're not one sixteenth for starters, they're slightly faster and some of them are sort of triplet sounding notes. So yeah, I'm losing the natural feel of the piano. So quantization is amazing if you've got something that's just right on the beat. You've got like a nice synth sound, you've got a bass sound, you want something that's hitting right on the beat, no problem. As soon as you've got something like this, quantization is really not your friend. You need to do a lot more manual editing. So let's show you how we can do this manual editing and not have to take our entire day to do it. So the first thing I want to do is let's dive into this opening part because there's a few notes in here that I'm not sure I want to actually keep in. So we'll come to here and we'll again just solo. By the way, if you want to learn about editing, all the things that I'm in here, I've got a three-part editing series as well, which once again I'll link up above and down below so you can learn all about editing here in GarageBand. So first of all, let's play the start of this song where we have this little quiet piano part that comes in. It's a common misconception. It's a thing. Okay, so I don't actually want these two notes in here. So I want to keep it really stripped down on the piano for this first part and just leave it with the guitar. So let's get rid of those. We're going to tap, we're going to tap again, we're going to go edit, and here we are. So you can see we've got our opening there, there's the first notes, and then these two here are the notes we want to get rid of. So the easiest way to do this, we could tap individually and then tap delete, but what we can actually do is tap just outside of any of these and draw a box, and then we can tap on them and then delete, and that's going to get rid of that whole chunk of them. And we can do the same with all these, because I just basically want those little two note chords without these little bits here. So let's just go down to here, and this is where it sort of kicks in <clears throat> in properly. So, we'll do the same there, delete that, and then just. He's going to disappear. The 
yeah, let's keep it in for that last bit. All right, let's listen to this part now, and we'll just hear it that we've just scaled this back a bit. We want the piano to come in really gently and then kick into that first uh, chorus. It's a common misconception It's a thing that many feel that the uh, You know what? I actually liked it better with them in. I'm going to do it. So here, here you go. Here's a nice lesson. We can just quickly undo. We're just going to tap the undo button a bunch of times and bingo, they all come back. Yeah, that, I, I deliberately did this so that I could show you the undo feature. Um, I think I've undone it one too many times, which meant I've probably changed something else that I've done. Which, by the way, you can hold down on the undo and it will bring up redo. So yeah, redo quantization. And then we'll hold down again. Redo quantization. Redo delete note. Yeah, so what I was basically doing is just redoing the couple of things, which was putting quantization on and back off again. Let's just check and make sure that it has actually left quantization off. It has. Cool. So if you do undo and you do too many undos, you want to redo, hold down on the undo and it pops there and you can choose whether you want to undo and redo and it will tell you what you actually can and can't do, which is very cool. A nice option. Anyway, um, I've got these back now. It's a common misconception. Okay, so they're good, but you can hear there's a bit of a timing issue there, right? So we need to adjust our timing. Let's tap again, let's tap and we'll go edit. And we'll come in here and yep, you can see that we are quite late on those notes. Now I don't mind a little bit of late or early and I'm not gonna go in and painstakingly adjust every note because otherwise I might as well quantize. But I do want to, anywhere where it's standing out like this, I'm just gonna bring it closer back to the mark. And what I tend to do is I will put, the ones I'm fixing, I'll put right on the note uh, because it's easier to do it that way. The ones that, and then the ones that I'm not fixing will be slightly off. So basically the ones that are way off become right on and the ones that are slightly off remain slightly off. I know that sounds a bit confusing, but hopefully you follow along there. See, these ones are actually okay. So I've hit those pretty well. I'm not gonna adjust for something like that because that's a nice natural bit of variation. That one, maybe a little bit early. Let's just slide that one up. And by the way, you'll notice here that I've zoomed all the way in. Again, you can check out the editing videos if you want to learn about editing and zooming and all that sort of thing. But you can zoom in by pinching in with two fingers. And if you keep going and then do it one more time, your snap to grid goes off. And I've explained about snap to grid and how to turn that off. But basically, you just keep zooming in until you're all the way in. The other thing we can do with zooming is we can compress and we can actually stretch out. So you can also, you'll notice here I'm zoomed sort of in, up and down, and then I can pull my fingers up and we can zoom that way as well, just if you wanted to get in for a better look at all of your notes. So there you go, we've looked at a couple of things there. We've looked at removing notes, and we've looked at the uh, timing of notes. Let's look at now at the velocity of notes. So what we're gonna look for here is, we'll listen to a little section here. I'm going to, yep, they're, they're all on there. I'm gonna listen and just see if any notes are poking out. So I'm not gonna go in and painstakingly adjust every velocity of every note, but if I hear something while I'm listening back that just sounds like it's poking out too much or is not present enough, like one note in a chord, then I'm gonna adjust that. So let's play a random section here and take a listen and see if I can, if there's any velocities that I need to adjust. It's a hope of kings and Okay, not too bad. What I did notice is that this last one here, like that first bang, it's supposed to be really sort of uh, heavy on here. So what I might do is come in here, ignore my low power mode, should have plugged my iPhone in beforehand. Um, so we'll come in here. Now I won't up the velocity on the higher notes, but you notice here that these bass notes, yeah, so they didn't have enough velocity on them, which impacted the power that we get here. So um, if, we, if I up the, the velocity on the high notes, we're gonna get a bit harsh and, and it's not gonna sound so good. So let's listen to this part and we'll just hear if we get a little bit more power in the bass notes now that we've adjusted those velocities. Yeah. 
yeah, there you go. You can hear that. Bow, it really kicks in. Because we've got no bass in this song, we need to make sure that the velocity on our bass note, so that uh, octave that we're doing down in our bass, is actually going to be loud enough so that it's going to be carrying the bass for this song. We've only got our acoustic guitars and our vocals. The piano is doing double duty here. It's playing our treble, but it's also adding in our bass when we need it. Okay, so we've adjusted the timing of notes, the velocity of notes. We've deleted some notes. Now, the last thing we want to do is actually change the notes themselves or if we want to add in some notes. So I found a section here where I like this part, but I kind of want to add a couple of treble notes on some of these chords. So let's listen to it as it is now. So this chord here, this one here, I want to add a top note there to just add some flavor here. We'll go in and edit. So I think it's this chord here. Yeah, that one there. So to add a note in, we can put on our edit mode. And I've hit completely the wrong note, but that's okay. I'm just going to throw a note there because it's kind of where we want it. We'll then turn that off. So I think that's the note that I actually wanted in my chord. So let's just have a listen. Yeah, so I just wanted that little highlight there. What I'm going to do is zoom in and I'm going to fix its timing to be off timing like the rest. <laughs> I'm not going to put them all on the right spot, but I'm going to at least put this around about the same spot. And you'll notice that its velocity was too loud too. So we need to tap, go velocity, and bring the velocity back down a little bit like so. And there we go. We've just added a top note to this chord that I wanted, that I didn't put in the original playing, but I wanted to have in here. go so we can adjust it as we go along and these are just a few changes but the key that I wanted to put out here is you can but I think it's a waste of time going in and editing every note every chord every part of this because it's already got that natural feel we don't want to squash it and make it robotic otherwise we might as well have just programmed it in manually and put everything right on there the beauty part of using a MIDI controller to record is that you get that human feel so just a few tweaks though are going to take that and make it sound more polished and more professional in our final mix here. So I hope you found that useful and I hope you can use some of these tips and techniques and that you're not too daunted by editing your MIDI tracks in the future. If you've got comments, questions or suggestions, you can leave those down below and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you would like to check out some more videos all about editing MIDI here in GarageBand, you can check out the two videos linked below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon, or you can go to studiolivetoday.com for more audio goodness.